one of my observations over the years has been that when when we talk about politics in the church or in the family or in the neighborhood or wherever it may be, um, we often focus almost exclusively on on them, on those people in Washington, D.C. or in the state capitol who are usually screwing everything up, uh, but sometimes getting a few things right. But the focus is always external. It's on other people. And I ask folks when I'm working with groups on this issue, when was the last time in your family or in your neighborhood or in your workplace or in your church that talking about people who weren't in the room solved a problem? Uh, we all know that that just doesn't work. Um, it degenerates, I think, into gossip. So step number one for me uh, is that we need to stop talking about them so much and start talking with each other and about our shared condition. And our shared condition is one of, of deep divides. <laughs> the latest piece of research I stumbled across this morning um, says that something like 30 or 40 percent of Democrats and 30 or 40 percent of Republicans um, would now uh, devoutly desire that their sons and daughters not marry someone from the other party. Uh, it's, it's gotten that bad. And 20, 30, 40 years ago, it wasn't that way. That, that wasn't how people felt about political differences. So I think, I think it's a complicated problem because the divides between us have been, in, in my judgment, considerably manipulated by a kind of divide and conquer politics that has been practiced for a long time historically, but it's kind of been on steroids in recent years, I think, as people in political leadership have realized that if they can divide us, they can also conquer us. Um, and by that I mean, uh, when we're deeply divided, we don't have a chance of doing what I think the founders imagined, which is coming together uh, in different forms of community, trying to reach a rough consensus on what's in the common good, and then holding our leaders accountable to that. Despite all of our divides, every survey that I've seen indicates that there is broad consensus in American society um, on a number of critical issues. Gun control is, is, is one. Meaningful, reasonable forms of gun control. People are against crony capitalism, whether they're left, center, or right. Um, people want um, more sensible uh, laws around drugs and incarceration policies. Um, around the same thing. So, you know, we, we have to ask, where did all these divides come from? And it's partly because we've been manipulated into thinking of each other as the enemy. And we've fallen into the trap of not simply disagreeing with one another or differing from one another, but really of demonizing one another. And that that has caused, I think, a great exodus from the public sphere, uh, creating a vacuum at the center of our democracy into which big money has been very happy to move. So there's a, another whole body of research that has traced the roots of, of what little legislation our Congress has managed to pass in recent years. And a lot of it has been driven not by these various points of consensus among we the people, but instead by big money. So the only answer to the power of big money is the power of organized people. Um, we could, in fact, get a constitutional amendment uh, to overturn, for example, uh, Citizens United, uh, that Supreme Court decision that gave big money a, a huge megaphone in American life, bigger than it's ever had before. And there's, there's actually been progress in that direction because folks have learned to talk to each other across these lines. Sixteen states have now, got, have now issued calls 
either by legislative action or by referendum uh, for uh, an amendment nullifying Citizens United. And another 16 states have such calls in the pipeline. And that would not have happened if it had just been the left or just been the right or just been the center. It's been the result of some very carefully cultivated consensus conversations. Um, and there's enough evidence that, that we can overcome the dividedness among us to keep me very encouraged about, about that strategy, about that possibility.